It is 11 o'clock. Uh, we are being uh, broadcast on the web, and uh, we're going to hear from Tom Block, our Public Works Director. Thank you, Commissioners. I appreciate the opportunity to come and present um, my budget request for 2015. I have about a dozen slides I'll go through, and I'll hopefully it shouldn't take uh, too long. Um, My goal today um, in presenting this is essentially to provide you as a board um, with information so that you can make decisions um, regarding what I feel the department needs and the county needs as a whole and trying to mix them all together. Um, now I realize that, that you know, I think the general, general request initially was, was from the board was to try to present a flat budget. However, the budget I presented is, is not flat, and the reason it is not flat because I don't feel that gives you the information you need to make the proper decision going on. Now, if you come back in after it's all said and done and you listen to everybody's budgets and you say, make it flat, then I will make it flat. But <coughs> I'm gonna pro provide you with information that I feel is just needed for this department to, to do what I think we need to do to keep our infrastructure uh, up to snuff, I guess, for lack of a better term. And um, put ourselves, put our county in a, in a position to be the best, the best we can be from a from a public work standpoint. Um, so, if I if I said if I did put in a flat budget, I don't think that would be. I don't think I would be telling you what I believe is is needed. So that's why I didn't submit a flat budget. But with that said, I'm, I, I, I'm really presenting what I presented last year. It's almost a, 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 a mirror of what I presented last year, and, and, I'll, and I'll go through it again why. Um, as far as public works is concerned, you know, this is, this is what I see our mission statement is for, for our department. It's to provide Shawnee County citizens with a safe and cost-effective infrastructure system by regularly and expediently maintaining and enhancing the county's infrastructure facility. Um, that is, is what I think our mission needs to be, is to keep, keep the infrastructure up to a point where, where everyone is safe on a daily, on a daily basis. And, and as the director for this department, when we think about roads and bridges and things of that nature, I don't know I think it's I can be very arguable arguable that the road and bridge infrastructure system is the most widely used facilities in the county. Nearly everybody uses roads and bridges nearly every single day. And that is is to me makes that a pretty darn high priority for the county. Now as far as our vision and the vision I have for this department, I'll be simple. Simply, I want I want us to be the best. Uh, if we're not trying to be the best, then I don't think we are trying our hardest. So I want to be the best, most efficient county public works department in the state of Kansas. I mean, whether or not we get there or not, that's what I want to get to. That's where we think we need to strive to be. Um, and I don't think it necessarily means you have to spend the most to be the best. I just think we need to be trying to be the best. And I want to develop and maintain the best county roadway and bridge infrastructure system in the state of Kansas. And in this, this sales tax that we currently have, sure is helping us get, get, to get there, I think. Um, but again, I want, to, I want it to be the best. And I want to be viewed, I want our, our department to be viewed and this county to be viewed as the county in which other counties strive to emulate. I want, they say, when, when others in our industry and across the state talk about counties, I want them to say, yeah, Shawnee County is where we want to get to. And I, I think that's what we need to strive for. And lastly, I think we need to, to strive to never stop improving. We think we always need to be improving, figuring out ways to improve ourselves. Because that's, I, I personally believe that I always have room for improvement. And, and the day I think I've reached the, Summit, I, that's the day I'm probably gonna really start to fail miserably. So I'm always, there's always something 
Uh, I think I can do better, and I think as a department we can do better. Now, as far as department challenges that I've that I feel we have, um, I don't. I honestly don't believe our our wages for our folks are competitive at this time. Um, the wage scale uh, for the department is, has increased one percent since 2010. Uh, meanwhile, in doing some some um, investigation and going to the Bureau of Labor and Labor Statistics, inflation has decreased buying power by 9.1 percent since that same time. So essentially, from 2010 to now, um, our employees' buying power has decreased by about you know eight percent, and that has impacts. Um, I mean, it just puts a lot of pressure, financial pressure, on our employees outside of work um, and I would like to somehow try to figure out how to get that corrected um, it has it has impacted morale uh, as it, it has resulted in resignations of good staff and it's, it's been difficult replacing some of them um, so that is a, that is a challenge that I think we and I know it's not just our department I know it's countywide and I know it's it's you've heard it before and it's a struggle for you all I mean it's, it's something that we all have to try to figure out together I'm not just saying fix it, I'm saying it's just, it's just a challenge that we've got. Um, another challenge we have as a department is, is the, the operation of our sanitary sewers, the operation and maintenance, because as, as you know, we are reliant on outside sources to provide those services for us. And um, you know, here recently we had an instance in one subdivision where um, you know, our outside source contacted us and said we really don't have the capabilities of doing that type of work and it, let me tell you, that puts a lot of stress when, when we don't have internal resources to fix a problem that you want to fix. And I'm not advocating, I don't want those internal resources, um, but it's just a challenge. All I'm saying is it's just a challenge, and, the, and, and the, the outside sources we're using to help us have been wonderful for us. They help us as much as they can, but that sometimes there are, there are times when they just can't. So it's just a challenge for us, and I think we've got it figured out about as best as we can for the, at the time, but it's just a challenge, and it's, it's a stressor for me when, when, when we have issues with sanitary sewers. And a challenge is just the proper upkeep of roadways. Um, I personally think we're falling behind on our asphalt mill and overlay program. Um, we have not uh, done any major asphalt mill overlay work um, since since 2010, um, and I'll and I'll show you here in a little bit again why that is a problem and how not doing that I believe will lead to more expense in in the future um, for us. And again, like I said before, I think you can arguably say the roadway system is probably the most widely used county asset. I think that's that's. I think I'd have a pretty good argument if I were to get into a debate with someone about that. As far as this, our department successes over the past year, um, we've uh, constructed 1.7 million in bridge replacement projects over the last year. We are in the middle of doing Northwest 46th Street uh, between Topeka and Rochester. That will be $3.2 million when that project is uh, completed. Southeast 45th Street, we're in the second phase of that project between Topeka Boulevard and California. That will cost, uh, that will end up uh, being $6.3 million worth of improvements. We did 70 miles of Haydite surfacing for our roads and multiple large diameter culvert replacements in the past year. As regarding our sanitary sewer system, uh, we completed um, the pump station in the force main project for the Sherwood system within the last year. And we also completed a pretty, pretty major, not the entire system, of TV inspection and cleaning of the older portions of the Sherwood sewer system, as well as uh, Lagoon Districts 2 and 6. Now, as far as um, budget highlights, just to refresh your memory, Public Works is divided into four different divisions, administration, road maintenance, bridge maintenance, and our garage, our fleet maintenance. As far as our administration, uh, 10 PW000, it's very minimal as far as any changes from last year. 
I bumped up electricity by 5,000 because electricity costs seem to go, keep going up based on what we spent last year. Insurance costs have gone up a little bit. Um, special supplies primarily for our survey department um, um, based on what we spent last year. We're also implementing where we're trying to uh, set as many uh, section corners as we can. We're using certain types of monuments for those. Uh, so that's raised those costs a little bit. So I've bumped that up a couple thousand. But our contractual services, um, I've reduced by 4,500. So by and large, as far as what we're requesting, besides you know the additional pay period, um, we're relatively flat. On road maintenance, this is this is where the large, this is the big change as far as requests I want to make for our department. And this is the same as I did last year. I want to, I really want to re-implement uh, our asphalt mill and overlay program. As I mentioned before, no major asphalt overlay work's been done since 2010. To do that, if we, if we do more asphalt overlay, mill and overlay work, then we would reduce the amount of um, Haydite chip seal projects that we would do. Um, and this would falls in line again with our strategic plan of where we have our road system. We have, you know, I've identified, I've identified a network of roads around the county that I would consider uh, are major corridors and kind of a, a system around the city of Topeka, and, and in making those our primary asphalt roads, and then all the remaining ones being. Um, Hey, that chip and seal. Um, of the major network, there's about 160 miles. And, and in my strategic plan, if we were able to do, figure a life of you know, 10 years, that would be having to do 16 miles per year. So that is what the change is, or the request again is, is for the road maintenance. What that would require then it would be to bump up our contractual services to provide a lot of milling. So bump it up 280,000. Asphalt, bumping it up 1.275 million. We would reduce our rock because we'd be doing less Haydite chip seal work by 110,000. And we would reduce our oil by 260,000 because of the reduced amount of chip seal. And again, this conforms to our, um, to our strategic plan. Now again, I think I believe I may have showed this to you last year. This is a curve um, that shows how a road will deteriorate over time. And it's just this blue graph. And as, as you have payment condition at the going on the uh, vertical axis and accumulated axle loads on the, uh, on the horizontal axis, which is basically means how many vehicles or trucks or um, drive on the road. As time goes on and more vehicles drive on it, this road just <coughs> deteriorates essentially in this type of manner, this type of curve. Now, this red line shows as the curve goes along and you do periodic maintenance along the way, essentially what you do is you If you go along and we did a little bit of like say crack sealing type of material, it would keep keep the road condition up here. And as it drops a little bit, we may do say a chip seal, and that just basically raises lifts the road condition up to a, a I guess a, a more of a newer condition. And then as we go along further, you know we may come down here to this is the point where we need to do like a mill and overlay. So we do a mill and overlay, and it raises it back up, and then over time. If nothing is done, then you end, end up, you know, basically the road, the road failing. But that is really, like I said the blue line is how it reacts if nothing is done. The red line is, is as you go along and do periodic types of different types of maintenance. Again, this is another curve, and this has put some um, cost to it. Um, and. and I believe I may have mentioned last year, we have a, a, uh, 
pavement maintenance system that we developed in in house it's fairly simple and straightforward but at the top here the pavement condition index is a rating of one through ten ten is like a brand new road zero is where it's just absolutely completely failed and one and two are where it's essentially failed but up here on on um, where it's 10, if it's brand new, if you do nothing, go along, you get to a point where if it drops to, um, you know, say an eight and a half or so, that's when we would start, you might start seeing some cracks in the road and you want to just fill the cracks, keep the moisture out of the roadbed. Um, as I may have mentioned before, trying to describe what a roadbed, at least in, in my opinion, the way to think about it is if you've ever had a sponge that is dried out sponge you can't bend it you can't <coughs> press it down anything like that but as soon as you start putting little drops of water on that sponge that sponge softens up and then you can start to compress it and that's really how a road bed works is the road bed is your dried sponge and and the road surface above it is what keeps water from getting down into it as soon as you get cracks in that road surface and the water is able to seep down into the road bed or the sponge then that road bed can compress and when that road bed can compress the surface the road surface on top compresses with it and since the road bed I mean since the surface is, is more of a rigid material that's when it breaks and as soon as it breaks you have a little hole a pothole and then as more water gets into that pothole and it starts to freeze and, and when water freezes it expands it pops the hole bigger and that just makes it get worse and worse and then you have more water get in so it just it's getting worse and worse if nothing is done. So anyway, um, so when a road starts to show signs of, of cracking, that's when we go in and do crack seeing, and, and we estimate it's, you know, $500 to $1,000 per mile to, just to fill the cracks, keep the water out. Um, and then as we go along, and, and keep in mind, just, you might say, well, how come we just don't crack seal all the time, and then you'd never have, you'd never reach these points. Well, there's also structural structural components to the road surface where trucks and loadings just structurally break the road down. Um, so just crack sealing does not keep a road new forever. But then as, as you go along and, and time wears on the road and you've done your crack sealing to pre prevent it, again crack sealing is, prevent, is you just to prevent as much as you can. You can't prevent everything. Um, you get down to where um, you may have some base patching uh, that needs to be done full depth where you, you cut out the pavement and you, and you replace the entire road uh, pavement depth. Um, skim coating um, it's just a small little uh, layer of asphalt maybe take it out some ruts in the road to level the road off. Uh, maybe a chip seal or hay dike that's where it's just like a massive sealing of the road because um, crack sealing you do with a with a machine by hand and you have like a little wand and you just fill crack by crack where a chip seal spreads the oil over the entire road surface and then you put your aggregate material over top of it and it seals up all the cracks all at one time. That works for a while too but again this these are really not providing additional structural strength along the way. So but that does help preserve the life of the road and, and raise it up and give it some additional lifespan but again it's more heavy traffic is on it. At some point the road starts to break down and the structure starts to give way. Um, this is when you get to this point you can come in and do a, uh, where you recommend doing a, a milling of the road and then an, an overlay, like a two inch or three inch overlay to provide some additional structural strength uh, to the road. Um, and as you can see, the costs, of course, go up for that. You know, the, the Haydite, we estimate anywhere from 16 to 20,000 per mile, whereas two inch asphalt overlaying is 115 to 125,000 per mile. And, and if we were to continue to, if we were to ignore that, you can easily jump from point here down to total road reconstruction, which is what, that is what we're trying to avoid, because once you get to that point, it can be anywhere from a half million to three quarters of a million dollars per mile. And that is what we're what we're trying to avoid. Whoops. Now I move on to uh, budget highlights for our 
bridge department, really the only change here is it kept basically everything level except we've started utilizing our bridge staff to assist in snow removal this, these <coughs> last years, and that's really helped take take uh, some burden off our road maintenance crews because as you may or may not be aware, we reduced our staff back in 2011 by about 15 percent um, from our road uh, from our road staff, and it, and it can come back and, and where it really hurts us probably the most is during snow removal times when we've got snowstorms and 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 our crews have to be out, you know, at all times of the day for long lengthy hours. So that is the, the only change that really made in the bridge department budget. As far as our garage is concerned, garage department, um, I keep hearing that, that fuel costs are going to be increasing. So essentially just bump that up 40000 um, to make it, I think, $4 per gallon and estimating 150,000 gallons of fuel to be purchased. Again, if that's if we uh, get in and, and do um, a lot of that mill, mill and overlay work. So that's just what the estimate is. By bumping it up to $4 per gallon, um, that increased that request by $40,000. Um, and then I put this other, this thing about the Mitchell Diagnostic Subscription, that's $500. I put it on here because it's just new. This is one of the, uh, the uh, diagnostic uh, online subscriptions that we recently gotten this this year um, to diagnose our, our engines for all our trucks and things of that nature. But again, it's only it's five hundred dollars. But since it is new, I, I've listed it on there. And also, in in accordance with our strategic plan, you know, keep our our maintenance our fleet uh, um, where I think we need it to be in in the years to come. Um, you know, we and we would like to to be able to. Essentially, we need to essentially purchase 800,000 a year in capital equipment um, purchases. Um, let's see here. So, I essentially, in, in summary, um, what this budget does is uh, the same as last year. It would restore what I built, feel is a badly needed asphalt mill and overlay program. Um, it also it maintains the 650,000 allotment that we've been getting for our federal uh, uh, project, federal aid projects, local match funds, which which is extremely helpful in um, in uh, converting some roads uh, into um, where some of our growth areas are. Um, it maintains again. It maintains a limited bridge material budget, um, and this is where, as I mentioned before you previously the end of the year transfers are critical to our bridge department because we the budget we submit is is extremely minimal to just do some minor work it's the end of year transfer that allows us to really properly fund and do a, a large majority of our bridge and culvert replacement or rather our culvert replacement work um, um, and also by having this in place I always have that in the back of my mind that I've got to be saving, saving as much as I can throughout the year, so that we've got <laughs> enough money to fund the bridge department for the for the following year. Um, again, it's fairly level for all division budgets, except the road maintenance. Uh, due to the request to re-implement the asphalt mill and overlay, and then I know there's also the the la that additional pay period that's coming up this next year, and I think that for our department adds. Just under a hundred thousand, like ninety nine thousand and five hundred or so. Um, and just for comparison purposes, um, the current budget that we are on now, two thousand fourteen, um, is actually three hundred twenty three thousand dollars less than our budget was in two thousand and seven. And if if I went back in and, and went again went to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, if you factor in, if you factor in the inflation over that time, our budget in 2007 was seven million four hundred and sixty thousand seven hundred sixty-seven dollars. We factor in inflation, that would be an equivalent of eight million five hundred and sixty thousand three hundred thirty-two dollars in 2014 dollars. Our 2014 budget is 
is only seven million one hundred thirty-seven thousand and twenty dollars. So our our current budget that we are in is three hundred twenty-three thousand less than our two thousand seven budget. Not even factoring in inflationary considerations. So, um, uh, anyone that lives in this community knows what happens when our roads are severely uh, have a severe uh, maintenance deferral. We all know well, well too much or too well what happens. And I really am trying to. I want to provide you this information to hopefully convince you that we don't want to go down that same path. But um, how can we afford any of this? Well, on the labor side, back in 2011, when we reduced our staffing and we had some early buyouts, we did not replace those folks. And by that, we've we've been saving $300,000 annually since 2000. 11 on labor, which none of that has, you know, come back to the department. Um, also, by combining the, the management of the public works and solid waste departments this past year and a half or so or two years, that has saved $180,000 to the general fund by combining those duties amongst four of us. Um, so the total labor and benefit savings by these two items saves 480,000 annually in, in, in labor and benefits. Over a five-year period, that's 2.4 million in labor and benefit savings to the general fund. In order to get, our, get this department to be a little more competitive, I would propose a 67%, 33% savings share proposal where two-thirds of that savings is reserved for the general fund. A third of it is reserved to help get our department's wages increased, which would be $160,000 per year in staff salary increases if we can maintain the current levels. I would like to do that at least up until we get a point where I believe that we are competitive. Um, and, and honestly, and lastly, I don't. I'm at the point where I'm not sure if we can afford to delay the mill and overlay program uh, any longer. Um, let's see if we have 11, 12, 13, 14. It'd be four years we haven't done any mill and overlay. If we do nothing next year, it'll be five years. So it'd be, you know, then 16 would be the soonest. That'd be six years. And um, that, that to me is, is um, well, almost a recipe for disaster. So with that, that is all I have as far as my uh, presentation is concerned. I'd be happy to stand for questions. I would. I will say I do. Um, I do not envy the position you are all in because I'm sure you're hearing it all from everyone. But um, um, I felt. I felt I was. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you what I thought we we needed to to move the department forward and keep our infrastructure system um, up to where I think our constituents, are your constituents. County residents um, expect. So. Thank you, Tom. I I will start if that's okay. Uh, it's sort of a question for Betty, I guess. Uh, for Parks and Rec, we had a roll up to one budget line for yes. you know there are three or four. Why don't we do the same thing for Public Works, or why didn't we do the same uh, thing? For just public because works? on the um, <laughs> real simple answer. Uh, Par Parks and Rec requested to do that. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, I would, would ask. My request, if you're, if my request for 2015, I had it in my notes, the, including the extra pay period, if it totals four up, um, is eight million four sixty nine two sixty nine. Okay. So. Okay. Oh, just. Uh, I was just curious to see. Uh, and the other thing, what I hear from my constituents that's interesting is they tell me, take care of our roads, make sure you remove snow when it snows, and don't raise our property taxes. That's what I hear over and over and over again. So uh, anyway, I'll open it up. Commissioner Bueller, do you have questions? Tom, going back to, you mentioned it was in the department challenges at the very beginning um, about wages. 
that wage scale hasn't increased 1% since 2010. It has increased 1%. It has increased. Yeah. So in 2013, we gave a 1% and a one step, the commission did, to to employees. I just, I just didn't. I just wanted to make well, sure say, that that was reflected. Well, say the wage scale. The, yeah. you know, there are two different components to that. There are. Mm -hmm. There are. There's a wage scale, and then there are the steps. Mm -hmm. so, so one percent and one step was given to the scale. All got one percent. If one step was given, that's probably another percent and a half. Two I think it was two and a half. Okay. Um, so then it'd be three and a half percent total. Okay. When you when you added in a step. Okay. Um, but I, I hear what you're saying, and we've heard that from all departments, and I think that is a priority for this budget, so it's noted. Um, and I agree, I think we need to um, put some dollars back into to roads. I, I uh, see the results of, of not giving good maintenance to roads. I just don't want to get there. And, and no, I don't I want to go either. there. I, mean, I, think I don't either. Because the cost then to go back and repair those roads is much more significant than at that point than taking care of them um, along the way. So, any okay. questions? All right. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Cook? I would think just a tail dive off of that. Um, in the city of Topeka, we see the happens if we don't maintain our roads and mm -hmm. we get into a quagmire where, and using that word again that the city manager used, <laughs> that it takes a lot to get back to the spot to where mm -hmm. you should have been at. And that, you know, ounce of prevention. One of the things I wanted to ask Tom is how many miles of road is the county responsible for maintaining? We have 600 lane miles. Lane miles. Okay. And of Which that. Which is, I think, if I remember right, when I mean, it's just miles, you know, when we're lane, do you understand what a lane mile is? I want to make sure. Like, Go ahead. Like, if you have a two-lane road and you go one mile, that's two-lane miles. But we have some roads that are five lanes wide and some are three lanes. Mm -hmm. so, you, so, for instance, a road that's five lanes wide and one mile long is five lane miles. Okay. So we have 600 lane miles. Okay. Now, of that 600 lane miles, how many of them are you going to need to have the overlay on? I know, I'd rather convert back to <laughs> distance-wise. I know I have 160 miles of what our, what we have in our strategic plan as far as our what our what our ultimate network would be. So there's 160 miles of those. How many of those are more than two lanes? How many additional lane miles that adds to the to the one six or it'd be 320 lane miles if it's 160 just lengthwise. But how many of those? Um, are more than two lanes wide. I can't okay. say, but I would, if I would, if I had to guess in lane miles or estimate in lane miles, I'd say we'd probably be around 350. All right. The reason we you have on your chart the asphalt overlay, if I read it right, was 115,000 per mile to mill an overlay. To mill an overlay. A a two lane road. Okay. <coughs> a, a, a two inch a two inch. Uh, depth. If I looked at the chart, and I mean, I thank you for providing it, where it has all the roads listed, all the roads graded by the uh, standards, if I counted right, we have two that are designated as being very poor, seven that are designated as being just poor, 97 at fair, and the rest are above, good, very good condition. So of those, we're really, I mean, the majority of the roads are in a very good to a good stage at this point. If I, again, looking at this chart. Okay. Mm -hmm. So of those, I mean, we're looking at two very poor, seven poor, 97 fair. And obviously we don't want the fares to become poor and very mm -hmm. poor. And I'm just trying to establish, you know, what do we need to tackle immediately as we look at this? As far as what specific roads? Yeah. I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure if, off the top of my head if I can say specifically which ones because it's been, it's been a couple months since I've looked at that particular, that particular spreadsheet. Okay. Um, 
So to to name roads off the top of my head. No, no I don't. I don't need. Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't need difficult them. for me to do. Right. I don't um, need to have specific projects of what we need to look at tackling right away. Just as an idea, if we're looking at again, 160 miles, 115,000 a mile, what is it that we're needing for the asphalt overlay program? Oh, I oh, um, I believe it was like you mean dollar wise? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I listed like 1.275 million. Okay. Right. And this is estimated on again, said 160 miles. And estimating that that an overlay would last 10 years, um, depending on traffic, so 16 miles per year. To, and, then, and then, so every 10 years you'd be doing the same 16 miles. You know, everything went just perfectly, I guess. And can you tell me what would be the average length of a lifespan of a road? How many times can you asphalt overlay it before you have to do a complete rebuild, due to just Deterioration. Um, before to do a complete rebuild, right? Boy, it's got to depend on I'm traffic a, yeah, and I'm weather and a lot of things. Oh, with yeah. that, excuse I, I, me, I, I, you're the engineer. Yeah, I, I, that's, I, and I, and I, I just, you know, just, I mean, I, if you know, I mean, if, it, if it's the, something that we this know, this is going to be my best, and I may ask Mr. Flanagan here, but I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to say to do it. If you could do a two-inch overlay. You know, three or four times, maybe. I don't know. What do you think? I agree. Before we have to redo it completely? It's subject to the base. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can continue to do Yeah, I mean, as JR, he probably has the best answer. I probably have a long term. Stable. <laughs> stable. And, and firm. All right. But as soon as that base starts to get invaded by water, which is your worst enemy, then your mill, your overlay, <coughs> will last near that as long. Okay. If you keep water out of that base, you can keep milling overlay for a long time. Okay. And again, I'm just trying to look at, you know, not just what we have before us today, but over the next long. 5, 10, 15, mm -hmm. 20 years, um, and looking at future needs for the county. Uh, the last question I had is, the sewer systems, uh, are those required by statute? And I, I don't know that I have any sewer systems that you're maintaining in my district. I know that we have the Sherwood Sanitation mm -hmm. District that we've talked about, but uh, two. two in mind. Yeah, two okay. lagoon districts. Now, see what I learned? Stand correct. I stand corrected. <laughs> so, are those statutory required? Those well, I know on Sherwood, uh, there used to be Sherwood used to own their system. Yeah, hmm. I don't know if it was back in the '80s. I, th I think it might have been where the county took ownership of the Sherwood system mm -hmm. and the treatment plant. And I think they used to I think they had they used to have a lagoon system, I believe, and they ended up building a treatment plant because of the growth and things of that nature. So the county ended up taking over the ownership mm -hmm. of that system, the treatment plant and the uh, I don't know, I can't remember if the county built the treatment plant or if or if the, the district did and then the county took it over. I don't know the history of that, but so the, the county took over the ownership of that. And then on the um, the two lagoons, um, when those developments were made, I believe, I believe um, that those lagoon districts are then brought under the jurisdiction of the county also. I don't believe, since it's a public sanitary sewer system, the public entity has to uh, maintain it and have it under its jurisdiction. Okay. So, so I would say yes, I think it is statutorily uh, required that the county to to maintain that public system. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Bueller, anything else? Betty, your turn. I just have a, a question for you, commissioners. Would it be helpful or would you like me to condense all of the public works and all the other departments into one line item instead of having them separated out? You have a thought? I, I'm fine with them being spread. I mean, split out. I think it helps me kind of look at the overall. Yeah, I'm fine right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, I've got solid waste sure. next. Oh, okay. Good for Ray, but absolutely. Because I think I was scheduled for an hour for that reason. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Close out here. Thank you.
similar fashion, um, as far as a mission statement for the solid waste department, this is the mission of the solid county solid waste department is to provide Sunny County solid waste customers with the most service oriented, cost effective, efficient collection of solid waste, which includes trash and recycling and household hazardous waste material in the county. In so doing, uh, the Shawnee County Solid Waste Department strives to protect the health and well being of the public and residents of Shawnee County. That, that's our goal, is to provide them with cost effective service and protect the, the, the public health. <coughs> As far as how, how I see, how do we get there, um, the vision is to continuously strive to become the service provider of, of choice for all Shawnee County residents by incorporating the following attributes into the conduction of our daily operations. I want us to be customer service oriented. I want us to be cost effective. I want us to be competent, efficient, courteous, and respectful. If we can do all those on a daily basis, I think we can reach our mission. Uh, for the most part. As far as challenges are concerned, again, same deal. Um, competitive wages and filling in positions. It's minimally, the wage scale has minimally increased since 2010. Again, mentioned before about the buying power decreasing by 9.1% since 2010. And we've had resignations from good staff and some difficulty in replacing, in particularly uh, mechanics. That's a very difficult uh, position to fill. Mm -hmm. Uh, workers' comp is still an issue. Um, this industry is one of the highest nationwide of just injuries. Um, it just just is, just due to the types of work. Um, we've improved last year, um, but we're still higher than I, than I ever want. I always, you know, the goal would always be zero. Uh, it should always be our goal. I don't know if it's ever necessarily obtainable, but but that's our goal. Um, for this, this coming budget, we've actually been able to reduce our workman's comp costs for 2015 by over 75000 and And we've reestablished a safety committee this year, um, and hopefully that's having some impact on it. And efficiency. Um, we're currently doing some round evaluation. Um, I always believe we can be more efficient. And so we're always looking for ways to, to make ourselves more efficient. But um, um, it's always a challenge to be as efficient as possible, and that's what we're striving to do. As far as successes, uh, we completed our first year of curbside recycling uh, <coughs> past year. Um, I think overall, I think we're, I think we are pretty pleased um, um, with how it went. Um, as I mentioned a couple of commission meetings ago, our the utilization of the household hazardous waste facility. Um, Broke another record. We, participation increased by 919 drop-offs, which was a 28% increase over the pre previous year. And we'd also given away 1,307 five-gallon buckets of paint that have been recycled and given to the public. That too was a 28% increase uh, from 2013. Um, and as you're aware, we have the county has the ownership of the old landfill. That's out at 21st and Hodges, Southwest 21st and Hodges west of Auburn Road. Um, when, when that report was being developed several years ago, they had estimated the mitigation cost about, to be about $3 million. Um, I had a heartburn with that because I didn't want to spend $3 million <laughs> to do it. So at that time, last year at this time, I would mentioned that we were going to try to self-perform as much work as we could. We've been working with KDHE. They've been very amenable to us to, to doing the work when we can basically fit it in. Uh, we have been making progress on that work. In fact, we are Tom Flanagan and I and, and Jerry King, our road supervisor, who's, who's helped coordinate some of the work, was out at the site with KDAG yesterday. Uh, the person we were with seemed pleased with our progress. We have been doing it all, self-performing it so far. And I think we're going to save about all that $3 million, to be honest with you. I don't think we're going to have to hardly have any outside sources come in and do the work for us. So there might there will be some coming up that will that may be some specialty type of work that we have to do, have to hire out. Um, you know, we'll have to hire out some groundwater monitoring, some gas monitoring. There might be some piping work in some of the wells. But unless I'm something I'm just not completely aware of right now, I think that three million 
I think we're going to end up basically doing it ourselves, um, which makes me really pleased. And you'll see some results of that here in a little bit, or I guess not results, but some outcomes from that. Um, and our customer base has been re rebounding from the curbside rollout. You know, when the curbside came on, um, there were some folks that just didn't didn't like what we were doing and left our service. And we've had about 900 customers back since 2000, since our low in 2013, um, which is um, it's about two percent. At two percent back, I think we lost about four percent. Four and a half percent, so we gained about two percent back. So that's good. Um, as far as budget highlights concerned, overall budget request this year is five hundred thirty-six thousand less than what we were asking for. Uh, excuse me, the request for this next year is five hundred thirty-six thousand less than what we asked for in, in, in this year. Um, on our collections division, asking for five hundred thousand dollars less. Mm -hmm. Our drop-off division which is essentially our public recycling drop-offs, uh, asking for a minimal increase, $4,000 increase, and that's, that's, um, that's largely, I think, because of just fuel costs. It's just expensive. And, 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 one, and, you know, and one thing I want people to understand on this drop-off is this, this drop-off program is that's, that's a, really a free service we provide to the public, and it's not necessarily cheap. Um, so, you know, hopefully people realize that, that that is a, just a free public service that this department provides uh, for those that don't want to have the curbside recycling. And then as far as our household hazardous waste uh, is concerned, um, requesting a $40,000 decrease this next year. Um, now our projected revenue for next year is $11,486,000. I think I'm being conservative. I, I've, I've projected it to be less than what I think, but I projected this year, just because I'm not sure if we're getting in as much this year as I thought we might. Um, but with our with our um, expenses being less, we budget-wise, we're last year I projected a actual an actual deficit. This year I'm projecting it more to be um, to be about about a break-even. Although I think. I have some conservative numbers in there. I think that will, that will, should come out better than break even. Um, our projected expenses are eleven million four hundred and seventy-seven thousand. Um, so essentially, a break-even budget. Now, in this projected expenses for mitigation for the old landfill mitigation, I've still included three hundred fifty thousand dollars in there. Um, there's a good chance we won't spend any of that. Potentially, maybe some of it. Um, I'm just putting it in there because, like I said, if there's something out there that I'm just completely not aware of that we need to be done, <coughs> uh, I've included that kind of that amount in there um, to, for those purposes. Also, we have a healthy overtime budget. You know, I've put it in at 10 percent. Typically, our um, our crews don't put in 10 percent overtime, so that's about $360,000. You know, it's probably maybe too conservative, but. I'm just being conservative, I think. Uh, vehicles, again, I'm budgeting 800000 um, And as we did last year, I want to make this a third quarter, fourth quarter decision so I can see where we're at. Based on what I'm seeing so far this year, we're going to be fine. Um, but so later in the second half of the year, uh, we'll come and we'll determine what our needs are as far as vehicles are concerned and come and ask for that. Uh, for that to go out for bid for some kinds of equipment, uh, and then garage equipment, hundred thousand, and and new carts, a two hundred thousand. Um, you know that that seems to be about where we're we're going at right now uh, for carts. Um, if you think about it, we've got forty some thousand customers, and they all have two carts. Those carts are fifty bucks a piece, and they last seven years. It, those carts can be expensive. Um, Right now, we're financially very stable, currently. Um, current ending fund ending balance as of yesterday was $4,496,000. Um, the ending balance has increased, and we just, we actually just increased, or we actually just paid for 
the, the trucks that we bought at the end of last year. So we've had that major expense come through already. Um, and the ending balance has increased each month so far this year. Um, it may drop at the end of this month because we paid for those trucks at the beginning of July. So we may drop, but, but um, uh, there's been no major landfill mitigation expenses yet. Uh, except we've been performing as much work as possible with uh, our own forces. Um, one thing, I don't think I actually put this in the budget. I may be coming at the beginning of next year and asking to uh, add a entry level admin receptionist person. When we brought it, when we started the curbside recycling program, essentially, even though the customer count was the same, the service we're providing essentially, well, I guess 50%, increased 50%. But phone calls and inquiries and things like that really ratcheted it up and having that per and we were we were spending significant overtime uh, for the staff we had and it was starting to just wear some of our staff down so we brought in an intermittent person to to help um, and that seemed to help a lot and so I may um, be requesting uh, that we make that a permanent position uh, early next year And uh, said we're just continuing to evaluate operations as we go along. Now, with knowing what our our uh, balance is there, um, the 4.4 .4 million or whatever it was, um, and trying to figure out a way to uh, again enhance wages for that department. Again, it's not a tax funded it's not a tax funded department. And, and this is just some real preliminary thought. I haven't, this is just a, a big scheme, or a big, not a big scheme, but a big picture. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I don't want Allie to put that in there. <laughs> just big picture, and I haven't thought any great details because I don't have all the ideas or all the great thoughts. But this is what my thought is. Well, I would like to work with HR, ASPE Union, and the Commission <coughs> to develop an incentive base wage enhancement program. I'm a big believer in incentives and in, in giving people incentive to work harder to, to you know, make more money. Um, this is what my thought is. If there is some number that we could say, all right, we, we have to have a, at the end of the year, a base, a base minimum fund balance, whatever that number is, three million, four million, five million, I don't know what the number is. That is what we're going to base it off of. And then we would compare the end of the year balance with the previous years, I guess against our base minimum. Um, if there's a difference there, then we would take some percentage, I just threw out 50%, I don't know, could be 50% of the, of the difference between the end of the year balance and our base minimum that we say we have to hold at all times. Then we take that difference and we use that to increase wages for the next year up to a maximum amount that we set. And this, again, for just for example, say 250000 just spread amongst 100 people or, you know, maybe $2,500 a piece on average increase. So, for example, if we said, all right, the base minimum we're going to set is $4 million, and at the end of the year, our, our base, our, our ending balance is $4.5 million, we would have $500,000. If we said our our maximum was 50 percent or up to 250 thousand, then we would increase wages for the department for the following year only at 250 thousand, and then we would oops, sorry, um, I don't want to get back, but then we would take that amount and and then spread it somehow, some way, between all the, the persons working in that department for the following year, and then we would start over for the next year. We have a base amount. Maybe it stays the same, maybe not. And this might be the worst idea ever, but <laughs> I'm just trying to think of how to do that and get somehow get incentives in there. Uh, and I know with bargaining units, it's not necessarily easy, but I'm just trying to I'm just trying to think. And and if somebody's got some ideas, I'd be love to hear them. But like I said, this is just a first crack at it, and I've loved. I guess I would love to to have you say yes. Go ahead and see if we can come up with something, and then we can go from there. But 
But um, anyway, well, that's all I've got. So very good. Very good, uh, Commissioner Cook. Well, I've got just a couple quick. Sure. And you know, Commissioner mm -hmm. Archer, I may need your help being the CPA, and I'm okay. not. No problem. Uh, Tom, if I add up your revenues that you projected, and again, I think that you said eleven million four hundred eighty-six thousand. And that's based off of the solid waste collections, the what solid waste drop off, and then the household hazardous waste. Yeah, well, household hazardous waste is free. It'd be recycling. Recycling. Okay. And um, and yeah, and monthly collections and. Okay. But those add up to was it eleven million four eighty six? Yes, that's what. Yes. Okay. Now, if I add up your form A, off of these. Three, I get eleven million seven, and this is off a of flat budget. Mm -hmm. Eleven million seven ten eight sixty four for the solid waste collections. One hundred and eighty nine thousand seven ninety five for the solid waste drop off, and then two hundred seventy nine thousand seven thirty two for the third. Those three, again, and my my numbers are off. Those three add up to the eleven million seven hundred and ten. I'm sorry. Add up to uh, we're at a net loss of six hundred ninety-four thousand three ninety-one. And I'm just making sure that I don't have my numbers wrong. Um, because if we're going to spend more money than we project to bring in. And if I've got, and if I'm looking at it wrong, I'm not. I'm sure the CPAs will correct me. They're here to save me. Teachable moment. <laughs> <coughs> what were the three amounts? That you I have um, eleven million seven ten eight sixty four. That one is. That number is incorrect. Okay. Um, when you're looking at that form A. Yes. Okay. Look at the number at the, the bottom of the schedule. You're not looking. Okay. At, All right. And that's so what he's actually requesting is the the eleven million oh sixty one nine fifty nine. There we go. Eleven four is. There we go. Really? Yeah. Then, then you that's my nervous. It's like a <laughs> well, again, I was looking at the. Flat, I looked at the bold yeah. flat budget number. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and I just want to make sure we're not going to be projected to spend more than we're projected to take in. Betty wouldn't let us do that. Not normally. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have anything? That's else? it. That's okay. it. Okay, Commissioner Buell. Um, and I noticed on space needs you did have. Um, place for uh, shower improvements and yeah. that sort of thing. Can you touch on that a little bit? Yes, we um, at the North Annex we have a locker room for our staff to go in and change clothes and shower if they need to. And the space that had been designated for female employees I don't know how long ago, mm -hmm. essentially was turned over for like our um, janitorial staff to store materials and things like that. So we really don't have proper facilities for our female staff to change and shower and we would like to, um, I think, well, I think we need to yeah, uh, so upgrade that yeah. to make that amenable for, to, for our female uh, solid waste employees. So we would like to put some funds in to get that done. Okay. So All right. I think that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, uh, you know, I think we could even afford it. I, I may even come this year. I think we can afford and to do, do it, it this probably year. this year. Good. Because I think we need to do it. Good. So. Okay. And then anything else? Okay. Um, you know, we talked about wages, and I hope we do. 
have an opportunity to at least begin to address wages in Shawnee County. But I have to remind everybody that wages have been stagnant uh, for everybody over the past seven, eight, ten years. Uh, they've been stagnant in the private sector. Uh, they've been st stagnant for the state of Kansas employees. Even at the federal level, uh, my friends that work in the federal government have gotten zero increases for four years, and this year they're supposed to get 1%, and for 2015, 1%. So uh, wages have just been stagnant mm -hmm. uh, it, due to the recession, due to the oversupply of labor, whatever it happens to be, wages have been stagnant. But I hope we can begin to address that issue mm -hmm. this year or for 2015. No, I know you're fully aware. Yeah. And you said, it's just a challenge that we're facing. Yeah, And exactly. I, wanted to, I wanted to point it out. So exactly. So, no, and I'm glad and, you did. You know. I'm glad you did. Okay. Uh, we have, at 1 o'clock, we have uh, Community Resources Councils coming, and so until 1 o'clock, we're adjourned. I, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, Tom, I did, did you uh, allocate any dollars for Keep America Beautiful? Because I noticed mm -hmm. we have them later in the day. So yes, we did. Uh, uh, we did. Uh, I think it's the same as we did this past year, and I think it's 45? Think it's 45, 45 okay. 45 okay, thank you. All right. Okay. We're adjourned until 1. I have one comment I'd like to make concerning these people. I appreciate what they did at 45th and Adams. Take that concrete joint and get that thing fixed. <laughs> and work right into the project. Good. I was going to come to the commission meeting and say it, but... You three are here, and these two are here, and they're the ones that need to be congratulated. Let the record show that that was an unsolicited testimonial from a, satis from a satisfied customer. Unsolicited? Unsolicited.